Hi, I'm Zach Mariner here with the Collegiate Times and VTTV, who have partnered up to bring you One on One, an in-depth series where we talk with athletes about their lives off the field. Today, we were given the opportunity to sit down with Virginia Tech quarterback Logan Tiles. A year from now or two years from now, think about the draft, think about your future. I mean, is there ever a time when, when you let yourself think about that? I mean, obviously, I think it's in anybody's head who's uh, in the position that, that I've been in and uh, you know, you it wanders, you think about it, but uh, at the same time, you know that it's nothing you can do about it now except for to go play, and uh, that's what I've just been trying to do, just trying to been shrug, it, trying to shrug everything off and uh, just get ready for, you know, what's to come in, in the upcoming days. Let's back away from football again for just a second, or kind of. ACC Media Days, you played golf, uh, you played in the golf tournament, and your team consisted of you, UNC quarterback Bryn Renner, NC State quarterback Mike Glennon, and Wake Forest quarterback Tanner Price. What's that day like? I mean, playing with those guys, not only playing with those guys, but just being with those guys away from the field. I mean, is that weird for you guys, or is it nice to just be able to go out there and relax? I don't know what to expect off the start. Obviously, I don't really know. I didn't really know any of the guys until I got there. And, uh, you know, the first they told us the pairings, and I was like, oh, so we got some quarterbacks. And, you know, quarterbacks can usually play a little bit of golf. And, uh, you know, I got up and we were – we got to the first tee and we all was just talking. And, uh, you know, they're actually some pretty – Bryn Renner is one of the funniest people I've met in my life. Uh, you know, uh, Mike Glennon is calm and Tanner Price is as cool and collected as there is. And I guess uh, everybody's game kind of reflects their personality too. So uh, it's kind of it's kind of interesting to see how they are. And, uh, yeah, we had a great day of golf. We had a good time and it was nothing but smiles and laughter. And your game is getting up there and driving at 350 yards if you can. Yeah, just smash it as hard as I can. You know, we played captain's choice, so, uh, so they, they were just – They were counting on you to – They just uh, – they laid up and they tried to put it out there as far as they could, uh, you know, down the middle, down the middle, and, and they just let me smash it. Now walk me through the story of that day. I mean, and I was there. I played in the golf tournament, and you guys felt like you got shafted. You guys got second, right? We did. But uh, you – We played ahead. the first six from the Blues. And we were supposed to be playing from the whites, so we were playing 50, 60 yards on every hole for the first six uh, from behind. We lost by a stroke, yeah. so we feel like if uh, we were playing from the whites, we would have gained that stroke, <laughs> if not more. I got gotcha. you. Um, and again, you know, your relationship with those other quarterbacks, do you guys keep in touch during the offseason? You said you didn't really know those guys, but – I mean, I remember you talking about after the Georgia Tech game last year when Jer when when linebacker Jeremiah added you, he threw the punch at you, and then you said he texted you after the game. Is there like a database where athletes just – everyone has their phone number? I feel like all <laughs> athletes just have each other's phone number and text each other. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, I just know that he's from the same area as a couple guys on the team, and I think he probably asked them for the number, and, uh, you know, he just apologized. You know, he's actually a really cool dude, yeah. nice guy, and – I, when I met him at the media day, you know, he gave me a big hug. Uh, and he said it didn't mean anything by it. And I said, I know, no hard feelings. Yeah. Is there anybody else, like, from other teams or even, like, pro guys, is there anybody that you text at all, like, that you keep in touch with? Uh, you know, I talk to a lot of the quarterbacks. Um, I've talked to, to Gino and, and WVU and EJ, Taj, uh, obviously Bryn, uh, Couple, I mean, most of the guys in the ACC, and then uh, I've talked to Landry Jones as well. So, pretty much everybody around around the nation. Uh, they're pretty. Everybody's pretty chill. Uh, one thing in mind, just yeah. like just like we do. There's just like a support system there. I mean, and how do you? You said Landry Jones. How did how did that come about? How did, did you meet him somewhere at an event or? Uh, I didn't actually. Uh, George Whitfield, the guy I work out with, he uh, works out with Landry as well, and okay. he just gave him my number. Um, Let's, again, step away from football. Talk to me about your love for the NBA. Obviously, you're big. Anyone that follows you on Twitter knows that you're a big Oklahoma City Thunder fan. That's right. Um, how painful were the NBA finals for you? It was tough. Uh, we should have taken game number one. Uh, or should we have taken game number should've, two? Should have taken two. Yeah, man, we, should, we had it won, and we just threw it away. I don't know what we were doing. Uh, it was tough. It was very tough, uh, especially to see the way you know we were – awful four years ago and then we just progressively getting better but uh hopefully we keep moving from that standpoint get back to the finals and hopefully have a different outcome this year have you been an okc fan from the start i mean what kind of drew you to that program i know you're i know you're a big kd kevin durant fan so that's right uh i guess he started off in seattle and then they went to oklahoma city and i guess that was the reason i was a big oklahoma city fan right off the start uh, i liked him and while he was in college at texas and then uh i guess when they went from Seattle to Oklahoma City, 
It was just kind of stuck with yep, it. Yep, it's kind of stuck. Gotcha. Um, does it make it tough for you that that your cousin Zach McRae, who is also on the football team, does it make it tough for you that he's a Heat fan or a, a LeBron fan rather <laughs> and just roots for the Heat as do most other Heat fans? Yeah, it's uh, it doesn't make it too tough because he didn't try to rub it in or anything. Well, he was he gone. He was in the he was in the, the Dominican That's right. Republic for most of it. He so. was, but uh, you know, he always he always shot me at Texas and said, "Yep." <laughs> One more game, and I was like, all right, I know. I was like, it's not looking good for us, but, hey, uh, you know, I can't, I can't be mad at him because he didn't rub it in too hard. And I know you have some issues there, as most OKC fans do, with Russell Westbrook, that he's so on and off. You know, when he's on, he's one of the best players in the game, but when he's off and he just keeps shooting, <laughs> it gets frustrating. Now, say uh, you're Scott Brooks, you know, Oklahoma City Thunder head coach. What do you, what do you game, how are you game planning with Russell Westbrook? I mean, what are you saying to him pregame? I don't think you can say anything to him. Uh, I think he handles it the right way. He just says, hey, go play your game. If you're cold, you're cold. Just shoot yourself out of it. And if you're hot, keep shooting it. <laughs> and, I mean, you can't, you can't change a player. That's just the way he plays. Uh, obviously, most Oklahoma City people love, uh, love Durant, so they want to get him the ball and get him as many shots as possible. Uh, but at the same time, you got two superstars and – two other stars, three other stars that can score the ball. So, I mean, I don't know how you would tell him to, you know, not play his own game. How is the West going to turn out this year with L.A.? Do you think they're going to be a legit threat, or do you think chemistry is going to be an issue? I mean, do you think OKC can get back to the finals? I think it'll be – the West is going to be strong as they always are every single year. But uh, I think – I got faith in my, in my, in my thunder. Uh, I think they can get through uh, Los Angeles just because uh, Dwight Howard's – uh, I guess he's the Superman, so his uh, big thing is getting through Kendrick Perkins, and uh, he's not going to be able to do it. You got because, faith, you got faith oh, yeah. in Kendrick Perkins? They, uh, <laughs> every, every year in the East, Dwight can't get through Kendrick in, in, the, in Boston, so why should it change now? History go. usually repeats itself. I hear you. Logan, I really appreciate you coming on today. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. No problem. Thank you.